everybody as I hope you are in for a very extensive overview of a um, nice set of electrical plans for a home uh, to suites and so what we're going to do um, everything that I do is, is pretty much for the new uh, electrician someone that's really just learning how to review everything or been in it for a while and because I think that any field of estimating, any form of estimating is an art. The more you do, the better you get. So hold tight, stay with me here in my initial um, basic overview of all the sheets and how we uh, go about thinking about the electrical set when it comes to a hotel, because it is much different because as you can imagine, you have common areas and then you have um, the individual rooms and you really wanna uh, save a lot of time because as we know unless you know that you won the project uh, you know this is time consuming and so you want to use as many um, shortcuts as you can uh, we're also going to do this for all of the trades and so we're going to have the basic overview here and then we're going to have a more in-depth overview for our patreon uh, subscribers and we hope you join us there as well Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at the cover sheet for the electrical set, the E set, right? And we know that this, you always wanna make sure that your plans have been uh, sent for approval. You know that they have an approval date because that lets you know that the, uh, the project's have actually gonna be built and that you know they're not wasting your time just fishing for a number, which is fine. But you, as I always say, you, you want to know that so you know you're not wasting a lot of valuable time giving them a detailed estimate and they're just looking for really the cost of the project uh, in full. So you always want to look for that. And as we know, the right band is always going to give you all the information, uh, all the same information. And it gives us the project location because like me, if you do projects in a lot of different areas, you want to uh, make sure your pricing and your man hours, uh, your basic uh, rate is based on the, the physical location of the project. Okay, and so you always want to take a good look, you know, nine times out of ten, you know, you're going to have the copper wire is going to be used. Uh, waterproof if they're going to be used outside you know all of this stuff and it, it makes a difference because a lot of times I have seen on the plans that we'll have junction boxes on the exterior of the building but it won't have the WP the waterproof symbol and so that's kind of common knowledge that anything that you're going to use outside um, you make sure it's a waterproof item and again how they get around having mistakes on the plans well they told you here in words even if it's not on the on the plans and so you want to make sure you look for that and as always um, and also on our, our patreon we go through all of the specifications for the electrical the master format and what number are we looking at if we have to install just the panels you know where in our mind should we be going in the specifications and look at that work because we know that we look at the specifications first and then we, you know we take notes from the specifications and then we come to the uh, the drawings and we take the measurements the measurements uh, help us determine the cost of the project right and the specifications that I went over in real good detail with uh, one of my HVAC students that the specifications uh, are intended to give you information about the material uh, uh, specifications of the material. For instance, for HVAC, what gauge uh, sheet metal are you going to use? You know, 16, 18, 20, 22. It's all going to be stated in the specifications. So they may take portions of that and put them here in the general notes but it is vital that you read the specifications. Okay, and so let's see. All connections to mechanical equipment shall be made 
with a minimum of 24 inch of weatherproof flexible conduit to prevent sound and vibration transmission that's important and so the this um, this again would be in the specifications but it's very important to make sure you note it so when you go back and you're doing the uh, mechanical power connections now you're using flexible ca uh, conduit um, for the final connections uh -huh. uh, two feet okay so that's important so what you can do if that is the case for each piece of uh, hmm, mechanical equipment and in this case in a hotel there's a lot right each room has its own uh, uh, private um, B pack system I think they're called so that that will become very important so that's something that you know you really want to it makes me think twice when I read through it I'm like hmm have I have I always included that no but these are things that you want to make sure you don't make the mistake not to and then and really once you've made the determinant uh, determination in one set it's probably the same with all the types of projects of the same type and kind so all right okay so symbols they're gonna give us lighting symbols but unless there's a real mistake on in the lighting plan in that set you don't really need these because there's going to be a whole new set in uh, in uh, there'll be a lighting schedule so I don't really use this general set and now I will for the switches if there's some that kind of look funky the ones that I, I don't already recognize then I'll look here for that okay and then all the dimmers because it could be anything Okay, so you want to make sure you <clears throat> have a good working knowledge of all of your symbols for electrical because there are so many and each electrical engineer could be so different in the way that they represent stuff and now there are a lot of uh, outlets that include uh, GFCI so you want to make sure you don't forget that in sorry it's a lot of talking and um, you know you want to note that if that is there and then uh, you can imagine all of the outlets if there's a kitchen there are going to be quite a few different types of outlets so you know you want to really make it sure you you point these out the 50 amp the 30 amp the 15 amp you know because that's very important and that's why I tend to do the electrical uh, plan the power plant first because of this kind of thing and you just if you don't get on the harder stuff first in an electrical plant it just wears you out because it's so much different stuff and then by the time you've counted everything then you have to go back and do all the conduit runs which it should be a day in itself okay leave that all a day in itself especially for something like this this is why you want to kind of come up with a better way to think about doing your conduit runs especially when you have units so it's what it doesn't make a difference if it's a hotel if it's apartment complexes when you have units that are exactly the same you can always do one in good detail and then multiply that by however many type you have of that kind because yeah it's going to save you a lot of time now when it comes to the power runs as you can imagine in your mind, because a good estimator is supposed to imagine in their mind the outcome of this project. If you have different units, they're not all like right here. And all the same, the power feeders are not all the same distance from the main distribution panels. And so that would be the only thing that you'd have to go through and redo. Is like, okay, you have to do, and we'll go through it in this one in good detail. So that's why you have to get on Patreon all the good detail and it's so worth it you know so if you think you like this so far make sure you like it as for a couple of reasons it helps other people like you know that I'm here and it does help me to support all of the other things that I've avenues that we're trying to make people smart so if you're good so far and leave a comment because 
we've done a lot of research on what people want to see as far as the estimating and it, construction estimating is one of the topics and I get a lot of electrical estimating and so yeah that's easy right but construction estimating can be anything right it can be framing drywall flooring concrete roofing underground utilities landscape final cleaning so help us out a little bit in you know, leave us a comment here on if it's other than electrical, let us know and we'd be happy to do a full series for you here and some on Patreon so you can support other people and support the nonprofit that we have that helps kids learn this stuff for free. See, kids deserve free stuff. All right, so all of our symbols, make sure, and you'll have to, that you are noting the symbols for the communication sim uh, uh, systems and rule of thumb, rule of thumb, rule of thumb. Always when you have fire components, uh, any kind of uh, ceiling mounted, anything, cameras, speakers, any, any, any piece of equipment, uh, on in the communication, data communication, telecommunications, and I always give it a, a four inch junction box and conduit to the ceiling because typically that's what they need to for uh, TV outlet. The outlet itself, the outlet is what the TV provider gives, but the electrician provides the box that goes into the wall and the conduit that goes to their main system so it's up to us as the high voltage electrician to provide always the junction boxes for these symbols and in, in it it's usually noted but like on the fire plan it's not going to note it's not going to show you a junction box it'll just show you the fire components so i always give them a junction box and three quarter inch conduit to the ceiling which i usually just give them six or ten feet depending on the ceiling Okay, and so you want to be familiar with all of your symbols. Okay, so this is the cover sheet. And uh, this is everything that's in this. Remember, we're talking about a hotel, right? And so the usual layout for a hotel is, general knows what we're looking at right now. And then the site plan. So all of the outside power uh, and poles and who knows, nowadays they may have EV uh, charging stations, that kind of stuff. So it really depends. So we're going to take a look at that. Oh, and then there's a pool. So we have the pool area. And when we talk about all of that, it's where's the main distribution for the hotel? Somewhere in the back of the hotel, I'm sure, probably enclosed in something. And so when you think about the pool area, it's going to have its own panel. But again, the main power is going to come from the main distribution panel where the, all the power for all the rooms are going to come from that main block of distribution wherever it is and so the most challenging part and we'll see when we get to the single line diagram is to physically look at the plans and try to figure out okay where's the panel for the pool where's the panel main distribution panel that it draws off of and just make sure you physically take that measurement because um, uh, power feeders are very expensive and so you never want to be short all right so we have site plan pool plan and now we get into the first floor power and signal signal data phone what that is and then we have four floors now in terms of hotels I've seen it a million times but you really have to make sure before you take the shortcut usually the first floor and see this is such a big hotel they've broken up the first floor into separate parts so usually the first floor is all administrative right there's there's never any rooms on a first floor of a hotel second floor there may be some rooms but it may be administrative it all depends but once you get to three four five they're usually cookie cutter floors 
where we have all the rooms and the room types may be all in the same place four and four may not be um, and that'll be helpful if it is when we talk about the power feeders if they're all if three or four of the floors are exactly the same then we could say one set of our power feeder runs times three because it's all the same you know so we hope for that I don't remember so we're gonna go in it together on this one uh, so so yeah uh, I lost my train of thought so power sitting all of those so yeah if all of the rooms I got it are all the same then we can do that multiplication so four First floor is usually its own, so you got to do that all by itself. Second floor, third floor it may be the same where we have all the rooms, and then in the center of the floor we have all of the power components, all of the panels for the rooms, and then um, you know we have uh, the laundry and that kind of stuff either back at one end or in that same area. So we want to check this out. Lighting plan works works the same way. And then that single line diagram is where we're going to really have to sit back and think and make sure we know the physical locations of all of the panels so we can accurately run all of the power feeders. So that's that. And so how do we approach? I always approach the power plans first just to get them out of the way because they're a pain. I never do the runs of any of the branch circuitry or the home runs until the very last thing because that enables me to look over my work three, four times, two or three times at least, to see if I've missed any counts. So that's good. So I would always start with uh, the hardest stuff, get the electrical over with, and then. Uh, once you do that, then the easy stuff is like, okay, let me go ahead and count all of the breakers and all of these panels that I'm going to need. And, I, you know, I, I would start building the estimate even before, you know, we're finished doing the takeoff because you can do that depending if you do it that way. Very last thing are all of the wire runs and then doing the multiplication for the wire, right? Two number eights, one number ten times... 300 feet or 5,000 feet of number 12 and 3 quarter inch conduit so I always leave that for last because I want my brain to be fresh after doing all this other stuff and to I give myself three days no matter if it's this kind of estimate or any other electrical estimate at least three days one day for the takeoff another day for checking the takeoff and, and getting it on the Excel spreadsheet and then the last day for checking out why those wire runs making sure, making sure they're accurate and getting them on the Excel spreadsheet okay so those are the sheets we're going to be looking at all of our symbols everything and what do we have next okay so this is our site plan you see how this is just crazy okay a lot of bubbles so a lot of things have changed. Okay, GFCI, waterproof, going to what? Panel, house one, probably position 57. And chances are a lot of these on the perimeter probably are. Well, maybe not. 57, that one is 60. Okay. And then, yeah, it's just a matter of. Now, let's look at some symbols and what the symbols are trying to tell us so what did the bubbles tell us they changed some of the design from the original set of plans and so instead of redoing the full set they've given these revision clouds and given these mark number one and on the note somewhere it should tell us well there's number two number two number one I don't know they've hidden number one they've only given me two number twos ok 
Africa. It's somewhere. Okay, but we won't look for it right now because it should be here just like number two is. Okay. We'll figure it out. Okay, but we don't really care, right? We don't really care because we're just going to count that as a waterproof GFCI. We'll find the number one some on some other page somewhere. Okay, so what we would do at this point, what are we looking at? That's all of our... Uh, poles, our lights, the F-17s, and then we have whatever 18 is, so let's look at our keynotes in their, their uh, sheet notes. So, of course, on every page you're going to have general notes that you need to review and take notes. That's why the electrical set is not so much that it's hard to do an estimate, it's just time consuming, especially when it's something like this. And so, yeah, when we look at the pricing, we'll see, yeah, we have the various versions of the copper wire, so it's telling us which one to use. And so we'll go over the cost book on the, and the differences. Um, and we hope you'll join us on Patreon. The differences and then what we mean with the differences of the copper. And, you know, it's good to know all the technical aspects of what you do. Okay, and so we'll go over that. Electrical contractor to supply, owner with drawings of the as-built condition. Electrical contractor shall comply with all local, state, and county federal codes. All lighting circuits shall be the responsibility of the electrical contractor. If any discrepancies, okay, lighting fixtures, Quantities shall be filled, verified prior to bid. I know what that means. Because they never let you do that. So, bid, bid verified, or field verified prior to bid, they never let you do that. So, unless they have a walkthrough, bid. But this is from the ground up, so I don't know what that can mean. All right. Um, and all the outlets. 30 amps or less communication system and no more than 48 inches measured from the top. Okay, and those are really notes for the installation for the electrician. What to do with firewalls, all junction boxes. It looks like a fireproof. Oh, that's interesting. Disconnection for all mechanical equipment. That's all standard stuff. Okay, so look at look, uh, look at the plan. So we have all of the power poles that we have to count, and of course, there's they don't show you the conduit. You just know that they're connected based on or how they're connected based on the subscript on the panel that they're going to. So you just directly connect them. Usually a uh, number 10 wire, three quarter inch PVC, everything underground is gonna be PVC. So what do you do when you're not really given a road to tow when it comes to how to run the wire? Well, you gotta do it in a more logical way. So you just assume, I mean, unless you're extremely special, right? You're not going to go, ooh, doo, 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 boop, boop. You're not going to do that. You're going to go all the way across. You, and you have to assume in your mind that there's trenching. And I always like to think, okay, I'm going to look at the, and this is kind of a good way to think about it too, if you really want to get into it and think about the best way to run your conduit, because it's really based on our underground uh, utility plan right from our civil set how were they running how were they running all of the other underground utilities because they would probably go within that same kind of pathway and so I'd look at that first and say okay well there's a lot of stuff on the exterior I mean you're not going to be off because you know they have to be connected so I mean are they connected yeah. I mean that doesn't even make sense I mean, we would run the wire here and then bring it down and connect it. And it's all about, okay, well, how was, how was it trenched? So you want to kind of bring that into consideration, too, or just do how, you, you know, 
discuss it with the electrician. This is how I ran the underground conduit because it kind of makes sense. Because again, you're not trying to get you're not trying to give a hundred percent. It's it's this much you're trying to give an accurate representation. So if you were to do it that way, you're always going to add ten percent. So if you do it in a logical way, you're never going to be off enough to say, "Oh man, I was so short." You know, or too much can happen, <clears throat> right? Because you're going to naturally these are going to flow together. You're not going to do each one separately. That's why they give you the subscripts and the panel number and the the panel name and the subscript on the panel to let you know how they're run. So again, electrical estimating is an art and a science. So that's why it's kind of pretty tough, but you do enough of them, you'll get it. And you do the hard ones, you really, the easy ones will be like, oh, that's easy, that'll take me an hour. Oh, excuse me. All right, so what are we looking at? So this is the building, right? This is the building, and we can tell that our all of our panels are pretty much located here inside the building, and so that gives us an idea. And then here's our pool area, and it's got a detailed call out, right? It's got a call out, so it's gonna it's calling me out to image number one on E one point two to give me all of that construction that it did that there and it looks like it's doing it here and we have a generator and so always when something is from the ground up and you're the electrician you definitely have to read the specifications because you do have to provide temporary power all that kind of stuff and that's not that's not on here okay so you have to figure out how's that how that is done and you the way you learn that is by reading the specifications so a lot of contractors a lot of contractors with excellent expertise are afraid to do projects like this because of stuff like that you know they don't really know you know how it's it looks so big well it is but it's no bigger than a couple of homes you have to put together you know and because you don't know how to break it down. Oh, what are we doing? What did I do? I'm bringing all kind of stuff up. Because you don't you you don't know how to break it down. You uh, you you think you can't do it. So that's not necessarily true. All right. So that is our. Let's look at some of our symbols. We've made some changes on our lights, so that's what they're trying to tell you right here. Okay, and we're going to do the full takeoff, right? The full takeoff is going to be done um, on Patreon, and we'll put it all together. And you want, I mean, the, the whole point everybody can count, right? So you just need to accounting tool. So um, the best thing and one thing we've always used and when what's represented here is plan swift you know we don't really use it as a an estimating tool itself like the final estimate which you could because you can program plan swift right you can program all the material cost and your labor rate just the same way that I personally use craftsman cost book I it's like they we both took a little piece of Craftsman cost books uh, equation, the way they produce there, because they do the same thing. You can program pretty much all of these uh, to do the same thing, where Craftsman doesn't do the measurements for you, where PlanSwift does, and then you take information from Craftsman cost book, put it into PlanSwift, and you can shoot out your, because once you do all your estimates, it's on this kind of zipty now, we haven't done any takeoffs but it gives you a list of your takeoffs and here on the right see if we're doing the electrical we can program all of these fields. I mean they give you a few electrical price per square foot oh that's easy um, and that would shoot out an estimate for us three quarters so they have a few things that are already uh, programmed in here but you can add 
just about everything that we do the takeoff for. So I might do one of those because I've never done it. For me, Plant Swift is just a, a ruler, right? I just use it as a ruler because we do everything here. You know, so it would probably make a lot of sense to do it just for now for teaching purposes, you know? And I think we may do that for, uh, you know, this year and try to do something a little different as we use Plant Swift because for me, it's the easiest thing that I've uh, found. Makes it, for, you know, easy mouse. Hey, you know when you, you can tell really quick when your plans are not to scale and uh, easy. But for us, it's always just been a ruler. So, you know, a ruler is a ruler. All right, so this is our building, right? And so when we get into our building, we're gonna get into the lighting plan. We're gonna get into the power plan, but for each floor, see if they're different and see if we can cheat a little bit, okay? And so this is everything outside. See, once we come inside, right, is this little squiggly right here says, well, there's more, <clears throat> there's more to this, but we're gonna stop it right here because once we get inside the building in the electrical set for the building, then, uh, oh, I was right. We do have <clears throat> electrical, uh, the, the vehicle, EV charging stations one or two which is pretty much going to be the future so we need a lot of those all right so underground all of the power we got some cameras got some cameras on the poles too I don't know what that that's what that is a couple of things so we'll do all those takeoffs and main thing we'll come back with the uh, conduit and wire runs for that okay so let's go on to the next page and start to break down uh, each of the floors on the inside and how well, how we would logically need to be thinking about that before we do the takeoff. All right, so now let's get to uh, some of the other floors. Let me get all through the Title 24 stuff. All right, so power and signal for our first floor see this is crazy so yeah always look for your first floor um, power plan to be nuts all right let me just say that look for it to be nuts and so how do you think about it when it's nuts well of course you're just going to do all your counts okay so that's not going to change you know you're going to look for all of your different types of some are GFCI some are not. Now, what you're going to look for, too, if there is a kitchen, like here we go. Okay, so this is the equipment, and I'm not so much thinking, I'm thinking kitchen equipment because those outlets are different. And so you want to be looking out for those because depending on how they format the plans, the kitchen outlets are, you know, some weird NEMA numbers. NEMA, whatever, whatever, but they, it's a weird NEMA, I can't even think, you know, there's so many different kinds, but they may not give you that specific NEMA, whatever, on the, in the photo, in the physical, in the picture version, but they'll tell you what piece of equipment it is connected to, and so that becomes very difficult because, you know, as an estimator, you have to make sure you're counting, especially with electrical power, right? You want to make sure <clears throat> you're counting just the general purpose outlets. You know, you have the accurate count on that as opposed to the GFCI ones that are waterproof and all the way down the line. And especially the NEMA 30, old five, the NEMA 5s, whatever, you want to <clears throat> be accurate. And so when you have a kitchen, just be aware of your kitchen schedule. And try to co try to correlate that schedule with the outlets you see in the kitchen, and don't double up on your counts because you can very easily. <clears throat> I have uh, one like that. Here's some other recordings we made to clear that up. But yes, that does happen. So this is all of our yeah. So this is kitchen equipment too. Okay. And it gives you, okay, the wire sizes, that's good. Nemo receptacle, but, 
okay, by owner Nima, but what, what kind? Okay, see, this is very helpful. So you can run your <coughs> your wire. As we know, for electrical, most things are twelve, right? But not everything. And so here we have a number three and a number eight for our iron mite. Oh <laughs> no. Uh, for the Insto, Insta hot water heater. <clears throat> okay, that's one and a quarter inch conduit, number eight, number three. Three number, two number threes, one number eight, and one and a quarter inch conduit. So, and then we have something that's a number 10. So, you want to look through that because typically everything is number 12, so you don't have to pull out your number 12s unless it's four number 12s instead of just three like I just saw that this one right here the this one right here the train something <clears throat> coil fan fan coil unit that just that one is three number 12s and one number 12 there so that's why we do the electrical set first because you have to be aware of this stuff and it is very important now NEMA type, it must come with the, the equipment if I don't need to worry about what kind it is, you know, because I need to know what, what kind it is. So, we won't worry about that now. All right. <clears throat> so, so we look for the kitchen, right, because, oh, look, we have quantity of outlets. I just looked, I just saw that, so. So when we have them here, but we also have have them on the plan, it's like, oh, um, that's because you got to think about how you're going to count that because you could easily double count. So this is the kitchen equipment and the mechanical equipment schedule only, not the, just the regular offices. But look, these have some funky outlets themselves so we got to make sure we know the difference for thermostats junction box for the thermostats they're telling us that there that's good <laughs> the manager controls the heat you guys that's that's right though right all right okay so it's just a counting situation <clears throat> now when we do the wire that's going to be different because then we have to pay attention to what position on the panel each of these are connected to in order for us to use our brains to run our conduit. So make sure you follow that part in the next couple days. We're going to be working on this <clears throat> this week and knock out the electrical first as soon as possible. That's why we're taking this long overview of the sheets in general because the next uh, videos will be the actual takeoffs, problems we found, and then those conduit and wire runs, which are the most important part. All right, so this is our first floor. No no rooms here, right? So first floor you're going to have to do a lot of, and here's the scale. Here's the So now we've come inside the building. So pretty much all the panels and stuff are here. The engineer's room. And this is, this is, I have to see what that is. Yeah, right, that's the main distribution out here, this whole little thing right here. And then all of our new panels here, and then there's one here. And that's the house, there's the EV panel. But the pool panel must be in the pool must be in the pool room uh, itself. All right, so second floor. Okay, wait. First floor, part two. Sorry. Oop, that's right. It's huge. So we break it off right here. Okay, so we count everything here on this side, and then we go to the next page, still first floor, and then we connect it here and keep moving it. Okay, and so that's a lot. That's a lot of counting. 
You know, you count until your eyeballs fall out on this one, but it's easy. The, the, the other part, when we come back, is how do we do the wire? <clears throat> Pretty much when you see this, these special receptacles, those are always home run. But see, this is something I need to make sure. Oh, these are the p -tech. Okay. And see, I'm going to look on that equipment schedule, make sure I know the wire configuration because mechanical equipment may or may not be up number 12. So you do have to confirm so you're not off on your uh, wire because it's very expensive. That copper wire is very expensive, and you want to make sure you are doing the right thing. Okay, and so... Again, we know how the outlets are connected based on what position on the panel they're going to. And they said this this right here was typical. They put a circle around and said it was typical and gave it a keynote. So I got to go back and see what that is because we have, it's the TV outlet and a, some other outlet together. And so for this one, we're going to need a junction box, I'm almost certain, for the TV outlet. So, and those are kind of things you don't see, but you know, because that's just the way it has to be. You need a, you need a junction box for these outlets, but that, these general purpose and GFCIs and all of that are part of the high voltage electrician scope of work. So we don't question that we need a, a, a junction box for that. You see, we kind of know because the outlet goes inside the junction box, but the outlet is the high voltage electrician scope of work, so we don't question that junction box. It's just the one for the low voltage electrician scope of work that we have to provide the junction box. A duplex one when we have uh, data and phone, so it has to accommodate two outlets or just a single one when it's the thermostat, but it has to be big enough. So they have to coordinate. The electrician is the one trade that comes for the foundations even poured, right? Um, temporary power all the way through the new lights being put in the bathroom. New TV outlets beginning to end. All right, so that's the first floor. So there are no, are there rooms? Are those rooms? Yes, there are rooms. Okay. There are no rooms on this end. There are. Oh, okay. Hmm. What is this? A home for suites? I've never been to one. Oh, yes, I have, but I've never been. Stayed on the first floor. I never stay on the first floor of anything. Okay, so. Hmm. Hmm. This is the hard part. Because they're giving me, see in this, I don't know if I talked about this here before. Okay, because they're showing me guest room, whatever. It's not telling me what kind. You know, so if I thought this is like a queen two or whatever, and I would do this one, and every time I see a queen too, I would I would just ignore all this other stuff, right? Because it's the same. But I don't know that I could do that with this one. So that's something to think about. It's like there may not be any shortcuts on this one. All right, so. Yeah, this is the first floor, and we got rooms. Just called the guest room. Are they all the same? We have to look into that. If they're all the same, that's even better. But I don't think so. If they're all the same, that's even better. We'll look into that, because really, if that's the case, in terms of counting all the outlets and stuff, only a thing we'd have to do is figure out where the panel is. See, 2C. It's not, it's not going to be a fun ride. It'll be fun to t in, in terms of teaching it, but
expect it's going to be a crazy ride, let me tell you. Because panel 2A, 2, da, 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 okay. 2C, power's up. All of these. I get powered by 2A. It's not going to be an easy ride. Life isn't easy. Alright, so that's the uh, second part. Second floor part one. Oh, second floor part one. First floor part two. Okay. Yeah, it's still, it's still bad. It still doesn't make a difference because first floor has rooms on it second floor part one they're not broken down they're just all the same we'll look to see if they're the same but the whole point is trying to see if you can save yourself some time doing one in the math but you can't unless they're absolutely all the same rooms but at this point they're kind of looking like they're all the same except for at the end and then that one at the end yeah because you want to save yourself some time you don't want to do all this counting all right but yes so in terms of the hardest thing about this is uh, the where's the panel okay so when the room is broken broken up in, in two Part two, you got to kind of orient yourself as to where the panel is when you go to part one, because where we breaking up the room, the the room, the uh, the floor is right here. So all of the ones we're about to look at are over here, farther away, not closer. So panels like right here and so now you have to figure out which of these go exactly where yeah that's not gonna be fun but it'd be very educational all right third floor part one hmm I see that look different and yeah, it is because it third floor has this something totally different so yeah boys and girls it looks like this is a project that you're just got to count 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 and what we can do is any of the home runs they have to be methodical because all of the panels for everywhere everything everywhere is all right here and so you got to think, okay, how can I best run all of the home runs? So within the room, it's easy, right? Within the room, you're just running this, this. Okay, so you got to go. That's a different. That's different. So how many home runs? Think about how many home runs in, in the room. Well, and what do I mean? How many home runs have to go to, over to this area right here? And so... Uh, 3C-36, right? All that runs together. So that's one home run. 3C-28, uh, 38. That's two home runs. That's everything here. And then all these special receptacles, they're all their own home run. So then you just got to break down. Okay, there's a 44, 38. I saw another 38. So these are connected and then home run to okay so that's how you got to think about that that's great whoo all right but we can do it all right fourth floor more craziness third floor more crazy fourth floor crazy crazy more crazy now we have the roof plan now what do we do with the roof the roof has the mechanical equipment on so, unfortunately, we need to um, uh, 
run name each thing individually each of each of the mechanical equipment equipment uh, power run separately get a good idea where the panels are for that so they're at H2 so wherever panel H2 so we got to go back to where the initial power plan kind of physically find out where it is if we had to imagine it down in the building somewhere in here right oh good look it tells us that's beautiful you don't have to guess that's the best thing they could do for you for the roof equipment okay so now you gotta figure out the disc all the disconnects for the mechanical equipment and then just get to running or determine it ahead of time if all the all of these are the same wire configuration because we got the schedule right we got the equipment schedule that had all of the wire configurations for all of this uh, meaning what size wire and conduit to run to the panel all of that was given to us on that schedule so what I normally do is just truck it out EF1 get my measuring measure it from like right here boom boom that's that plus 10 feet always give it at least 10 feet down because I'm assuming it's inside right it's not on top of the roof but a single line diagram is going to tell us exactly where each of the panels are okay so we made it to the roof power roof oh good look here we go all the disconnects so it just tells it doesn't tell us anything Oh, yes, it does. There we go. So, yeah, the only thing we have to really look out for, and we've got two number 12s, two, da, 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 two number 8s, one number 10. That, those two, these three, and then those two down there. Everything else is uh, our typical home run, three number 12s, and whatever, uh, three-quarter inch conduit. So it's just a few things we have to pull out. Everything else, we don't have to mark it separately because... It's all number 12 wire. And of course, we're going to read all of the notes in general. We're going to verify, coordinate with the architect and the equipment vendor the exact location of the equipment, including final connection requirements. Coordinate the location of the disconnect switch with da 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 da. And let's go to the next page. All right. So, uh, we are now at the lighting plan very easy okay so we just got to count the lights and what's this telling us let's see what notation that is giving us it should tell us first the first thing here is the mark of the light and this is probably the lighting control it's connected to that's what that looks like let's see no, da, 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 da. let's see mm, yeah let's keep going to see what we got a lot of floors and see the good thing about these now these you can I believe you can cheat I mean you probably could cheat with the other one but you gotta you gotta know how to do it because it looks like that's the fourth floor I just pan it out let's see that's the third floor fourth floor some look different oh back here look different oh yeah where they're connected to and I think you do this floor and just multiply by two. At least you can get away with that. Let's see. Oh, where? Let's see. Yeah, the panels. Yeah, the only thing changes here is. Yeah, I think you can do that. Now, what was? We're at the single line diagram. I'm not quite sure what that. Uh, what those notations were. But I think that's what they were. Um, let's go back. We first get there. Yeah, zone. Yeah. Yeah, 
I believe that's the lighting control it's connected to. And you can imagine this is just full of them. Yeah, because that, that's the, uh, the mark for the light. Just want to make sure you're reading the right stuff. That's the mark. Oh, well. Oh. Okay. I get it. Uh, uh, 2B, 29B, yeah, 2B, that is probably the panel, the panel, yeah, probably, I don't know, but these are the kind where they give you the light, they don't even tell you the light on the plan, they don't give you the light on the plan, they only tell you here. And then you have to figure it out for yourself. Okay, so this one is L1. That sucks. Because it's going to require you to really not make mistakes when they should have given you all the marks instead of this other crap that they gave you. This, they just unnecessarily made this one hard. That's unnecessary. Sad. All right, but we'll get it done. All right. Single line diagram. So we have four floors. All right, so. Not helpful at all. See, this is all the new stuff that had to be added or changed. Okay, so the main distribution panel is here. We saw that on the first floor. And then all of the grounding requirements. And then all of the main panels. Okay, and EV control. And then we should have our yeah, generator. Yeah, that was new. That was added. All the, the generator and what's needed for the generator. Okay, and then all of these. Now, um, we just have to look for panel DP2. And those are probably on each of the floors and connected to each of the panels on each of the floors. So that makes sense. And so what we have to physically say, run all of those home runs, each room, here are the panels, and then the main distribution panel, we're looking at a run from there to each of those. However, we just saw that at the single line. But then we have to run each room of its, in, you know, all of the branch circuitry that are connected together. Figure out how many home runs now and at what point are we going to, because these these three, let me see, four, three C thirty six, this one, three C thirty six. So from here, here, three C thirty six, here, here, and here. So this one, this one, and all of those are all connected, branched together, and then they go to some point I'd probably take them from right here boom here two three C so that's just one and these go to three C thirty eight so three C thirty eight all these are branched together wherever I see three C thirty eight three C thirty eight here they branch to here which is branched to here 
scratch to here, here, and here all together and run to 3C. Okay, so that's how we'd be doing that. Room by room by room. Fun. All right, and then uh, all the panels. All right, so I have to just go through these and uh, determine all of the breakers we need. 400 amp three pole and just panel by panel and what we need and then I'm sure we have some uh, well all of our uh, and then you know here's all the details what the stuff should look like basic how the how we're taking the conduit through the ceiling through the walls through everything and what's required like the mechanical equipment when it has to come down through they have to know how to uh, how to make sure the penetrations through the walls are right, and so us as uh, estimators for something like that, we just give an allowance when we know it has to, or it has to go through a sleeve or something like that to go through the wall. We give it that allowance. So um, from this point, you know, you always want to do a full review of your electrical set. This is a huge project to undertake but whether it's you know it's a three-step process you do your takeoffs you do your pricing from the cost book and you professionally show it on your excel spreadsheet and so that's what we're going to be doing uh, on patreon now we're going to do the actual takeoffs show some cost book information man hour totals which is vital how long does it take to do this thing so please give us a like Please subscribe. I always like to uh, be able to show what I know and, and share with people. So please subscribe. I, I'd love that. that. That'd be great. And uh, so you can always see what we have coming up new. And if you so choose, please join us at the uh, Patreon site too. Have a good rest of your weekend. And I'll see you on Monday.